Hey people, I'm Christopher Smith, hobbyist woodworker and engineer, and Eon Laser kindly offered me one of their small but powerful CO2 lasers, the Mirror Redline 5S, with a 60 watt glass tube. It's pretty much a business in a box, capable of cutting and engraving a massive range of materials, and it's packed full of features. I'm hoping to use it to take my woodworking to the next level, but also make a little bit of money on the side. In this video, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to set up one of these. No, wait, in fact, that's a lie. I got Aeon's UK support to come down to my workshop and set it all up for me. This means for the first time in any of my videos, you'll see how something's supposed to be done properly and professionally. It took a little while for my machine to arrive, but Aeon kindly gave me a nice little update showing my machine in their factory being tested. Everything arrived in one big crate and in fantastic condition. However, it was a little earlier than expected, so my workshop wasn't quite ready. No matter, I unboxed it in my living room and created the world's most expensive and high-tech coffee table. I'm really looking forward to playing with this machine. Most of my experience with lasers has been a cheap diode laser and an old CO2 at my local makerspace. Spec-wise, this thing makes them look like toys. The cat approves, of course. Over in the workshop, I cobbled together a bench just about the right size for the machine, 115 kilograms total in weight, and with its speedy motors, I was warned I'd need a solid bench, so I doubled up on 2x4s and made something fairly solid that was also bolted to the wall for extra rigidity. It also made sure I had plenty of access to the machine for setup and maintenance. Now they recommend at least 6 inches either side for airflow, and with the orientation of the laser where I've got it planned, there's plenty of room to get that, and also to get to the back. Plus, with the machine's pass-through ability, you can slide longer pieces of work into the machine, so I wanted to take full advantage of that and make sure I had plenty of space. In hindsight, I'm happy with the bench, but Eon do do a bench with wheels, which I probably should have sprung for. Not pretty, but I also made a hole in the wall for fume extraction. Now this laser has a built-in extractor, which is really nice, along with five meters of flexi ducting, so you just need a four inch vent hole leading to somewhere you don't mind burning smells going out to. Time to say goodbye to my crappy old diode laser. This thing's been great. Um, for a little light engraving and cutting, very thin woods, but at five watts, there's really no point in keeping it. Perfect. Now let's get a few strong friends to help me move it into the workshop. We took out the honeycomb bed and the slats, as well as all the other stuff that they bundled, just to make it a little lighter and so we could wheel it over on a dolly. A few pivots and to me to use later and it's on the bench looking sexy and ready to set up. They bundle a bunch of stuff with the machine and I also got the chuck rotary axis so I can engrave some of the wood turning that I do. I'm really looking forward to trying that thing out. Accessory wise you get a network cable so you can connect the machine to a network directly. Now it'll handle Wi-Fi too but I'm actually going to use something completely different. I'm going to go directly from a USB into a PC. And of course they give you a USB cable as a set of hex keys, cotton swabs for cleaning, two key switches for accessing the doors and panels, pipe clamps for the five meters of ducting that they give you. Note that ideally for optimal airflow, you should use as little of the ducting as possible. And if you have a permanent location, consider using some rigid stainless ducting instead. A lens remover, great for not getting your grubby little fingers on the lenses. A USB disc, which includes some of the bundled software. Incidentally, this will also work with light burn, which is great. As a funnel for helping to fill up the chiller. Uh, it's an integrated chiller on this machine, by the way. Rail lubricant for ensuring your railing is fully lubed, an acrylic shooting target, and there's some spares like a spare timing belt, uh, some screws, ceiling plugs, and they give you a honeycomb table for those jobs that are just too small for the blades on the bed but still need to be fairly clear behind to help any flashback issues. I also seem to have some t-shirts too so I can look the part when doing laser videos. I might actually wear them when it's not winter and I'm not freezing the nipples off. I'm not sure how I had the patience to have this machine in my workshop and not set it up myself and start using it. It's really quick and easy to set up and I could have done it myself. But 
we wanted to show you how available UK support is and how great the UK support is. If you're buying a product for like this from overseas, you want to know that that support is available and I've been extremely impressed with the whole experience in dealing with Aeon so far. If I had to buy another machine from scratch, I'd have complete peace in mind buying from someone like them. Christmas came early for me as Bill from Powell CNC came down just before Christmas, in fact, just before Christmas Eve even, to help me get started. First things first is setting up the chiller. Now something awesome about this machine is the fact that it comes with a built-in chiller, so you don't need to buy a separate chiller and have a bucket of water nearby like on some old lasers. That's brilliant if you have a little workshop like mine. The Mira 5S has a tank capacity of about 2.5 litres and should be filled with distilled water. Filling it's nice and easy, just undo the bung, pop in the pipe and the funnel and pour away. There's a level indicator on the back and it should be filled just so it goes into the fill zone, but not any further. If the water does run too low and goes into that alarm zone, you'll get an alarm come up telling you, as there's a sensor in there as well. During cold periods like it is at the moment, you should also add a percentage of antifreeze in there just to make sure nothing freezes up as this could damage the system or the tube. Now there's a nice chart in the manual about how much to add, so we topped it up as needed. As I mentioned, this thing has got a built-in extractor, so it's just as simple as popping the flexi ducting to the outlet and then into the wall, securing it with Jubilee clips. As they give you five meters, Bill cut down the ducting a bit to improve airflow, but this still gave me a bit of play for moving stuff around if needed. Putting on my HVAC hat for a second, if you do need something more permanent, stainless rigid ducting works really well. Don't use galvanized. Obviously try and avoid right angles too and keep the total length under four meters if you can. If you must go over four meters, jumping up a sized five inch ducting or using an additional fan can help. As you can imagine, the smoothly moving X and Y axis could move in transit, cause problems when it comes shipped. Uh, so they supply pins to secure the axes in place. Now there are some straps on either side with nice labels reminding you to remove these pins before using the machine. Just open the side panels on the left and right of the machine and they can just be pulled out. The laser must be level, ignoring the obvious issues with water flow and keeping things on the bed, an unlevel machine can cause additional friction on the rails and shorten the machine's lifespan. It's not so much of an issue on the smaller 5S, but the bigger machines it, it is important. Now a leveling gauge comes with most of the machines, but a simple spirit level just does the trick. If you need to make any adjustments, the feet are easily adjustable with a spanner. The Mira 5 does not come with a leveling gauge as it's not so critical due to the shorter length of the rails. It's a fairly rigid machine. We connected up the power cable and in this case a USB cable to go from the PC uh, that's going to run the laser. There's a key switch which is handy if you want to lock down the machine. Maybe you've got curious children around in the house or perhaps a co-worker who wants to try giving himself a tattoo. I don't know, but it's nice to have it there. Now my workshop is very secure so it can stay unlocked. So just turn the key switch, reset the emergency stop, and away we go. We've got power. When you first power up the machine, give it a few minutes as the water needs to circulate and flow into the tube. You can take the cover off and watch this, which is really cool. I should mention that one of the really groovy things about this machine is that there are so many things that are toolless, like changing the lens and the mirrors, and also this includes the tube. That's right, no tools are needed to change the laser tube over. Right, that's done, but it might be worth just checking those water levels after this is done, because obviously the tank will empty a little bit as the water flows into the machine. And indeed, we had to do a little top up. So time for the first cuts. Right, we're ready to set up and ready to cut. Bill rather sensibly did some checks before burning anything. Some jogging of the X and Y axis, raising and lowering the bed, homing everything, etc. I'm in the laser! It's all looking good. Has to be said, Bill's an amazingly patient man with me bombarding him with tons of questions. We took a piece of scrap MDF and drew a rectangle in light burn and sent that over to the laser. Quick parameter check just to make sure everything was going to cut okay. 
and then fire the laser. Begin laser ignition! And while that's cutting, let me tell you about speed. We're not cutting at full speed here. This thing can go fast. 2,000 millimeters per second engraving if you put an RF tube on it. Although I'm using a glass tube, which will do up to 1,200 millimeters per second. And that's 5G acceleration as well. Very, very fast. To put that into perspective, that's 60 miles per hour in 0.34 seconds. Enough to make a human faint if they were to be strapped onto something that fast. Once that was done, we then measured the diagonal of the rectangle to ensure everything was the size it was supposed to be. Perfect. Now for an engraving test on some card just to check the power levels. We focused the lens and flattened out the card. Now autofocus is standard on the red line machines and it doesn't use one of those fiddly pin things that you see on some lasers. There's a ring around the lens which will detect contact with the workpiece. I was quite impressed with the fume extraction at this point by the way. Most of the smoke was being vented out of the back extractor and you could hardly smell anything in the workshop at all. Now, all the rails and the belts are surrounded by covers too which means there's less cleaning up of certain debris. Something I'm going to need to get though is some thin magnets just to help hold down flexible materials like this to the bed. Uh, with the extraction and the air assist, especially light stuff like maybe paper, we'll need holding down. Lid closed and away we go. One of the little things, and there are lots of little things um, I love about this machine, is the light on the front. Green means it's cutting, red if something is wrong. A nice big visual indicator of what's going on. And any further details about that are on the main HMI. A quick look with the loop and the engraving is spot on, all lined up. Now for some three millimeter clear acrylic sheet. Just a quick engrave with some text and a clean cutout of an apple shape. Beautiful. And we tried changing some of the power settings to get an even cleaner cut. That's even better still. Now, the really fun part, testing the rotary engraver. I've got the Chuck style rotary engraver jig, which is perfect for gripping things tight, such as some of the wood turning that I might do. If you're planning on doing tumblers and delicate things, perhaps glass, the roller rotary is much better. The Chuck one can do it, but some care needs to be taken. One thing that did stump us for a minute, uh, but it soon became clear what the issue was, is how the rotary works with its own drive. Most laser cutters swap out the Y axis so this is disabled when using the rotary, but the mirror has an independent drive. So you can not only use the rotary, but also at the same time, use the Y axis still and position the laser exactly where it's needed. Groovy. We did a little bit of engraving on the rotary, just using a bit of dowel, uh, taking care not to hit the chuck, of course. Look at that depth of cut. Who needs a lathe with this thing? I could do all my wood turning with a laser. We tried a snowflake uh, engrave too, and that came out wonderfully. Quite low power and still quite a nice deep engrave. I've got so many ideas now flowing through my brain. I can't wait to use this thing for some projects, especially some of my wood turning stuff. So absolutely massive thanks to Eon for this machine and a massive thanks to Bill at Powell CNC for coming all the way down here and helping setting things up just before Christmas too. Um, I'm absolutely really looking forward to posting some more videos on this and when i do i shall pop them here for you to click on uh woo, there oh yes videos <laughs> oh yes <laughs>